This is John Kohler with OKRAW.com. Today I'm going to have an exciting episode and I'm going to talk about a new product that's coming out really soon. It's called Moringa and Moringa is basically a tropical tree that grows and you can just harvest the leaves and eat them. You, yes, you can eat them raw. They don't taste so good. It's not like eating lettuce. It's kind of like bitter. So I would consider it more of a medicinal herb. Moringa has been used since 2000 BC as actually a medicinal herb and not necessarily like a food where they'd make full and complete meals out of it. Um, but that being said, Moringa is very nutritious. So per tablespoon, Moringa contains 20 to 30% protein, nine times more protein than yogurt, if you still eat yogurt, <laughs> 10 times the vitamin A of carrots, 17 times the calcium of milk, 15 times the potassium of bananas, uh, 25 times the potassium of spinach, and four times the chlorophyll of wheatgrass. And we all know how wheatgrass, how good wheatgrass is for us. Um, that being said, also it has about half the vitamin C of oranges. So it also has a lot of vitamin C compared to other things. So another thing about Moringa is that it's up to 40% protein by dry weight containing all the essential amino acids and it's packed with antioxidants, vitamins, minerals, and much more. One of those things that it has actually that I really like is plant cytokines, which are basically like plant hormones, which are basically anti-aging for the plant and may also be anti-aging for us. So um, Moringa is a very good food. I encourage people to grow it in their garden. They could grow it fresh and eat it. Um, let's see, it doesn't like places that frost, although it might die back to the roots and you could mulch it heavily if you do live in a place that frost. It grows very well in the tropics and where it stays really warm. Well, anyways, on today's episode, what we're going to show you is we're going to talk to you about the processing of how standard Moringa is processed uh, in trade, and then also how I'm going to process it and how I think trade should be processing their Moringa, you know, using more natural methods. So I was lucky enough to visit my friend uh, Bruce the other day and harvest a Moringa tree. So let's go to that clip and we'll show you me chopping down a Moringa tree and harvesting some Moringa leaves. So here we go. Mm. There we Yay! go. Yay! <laughs> nice cut. Here's the whole tree Woo! in my hand. <laughs> it's falling off. <laughs> <laughs> so what I'm doing now is I'm trimming all the, the extra branches off the Moringa tree. And uh, we're going to take these uh, branches and basically uh, dehydrate the leaves at a low temperature. It was so fun chopping down that Moringa tree. Um, got to chop it down. I was eating fresh leaves off the plant and yet, yes, it was a little bit bitter, you know, so once again, I would use it as a medicinal. So I have several classes of foods. In my opinion, I have things that are foods that I could eat abundance of and I love so much and that I could eat every day, day in and day out. And some things, maybe when they taste bitter, or maybe not so good, I treat those more as a medicinal. So then I would eat those in small, you know, more limited quantities. So uh, Moringa would be actually really good to add to like a smoothie or maybe add to a salad dressing add to if you do cook things you could use add it to bake goods um you could make a tea out of it probably make a pretty good tea if you don't uh heat up a water and uh, cook food or cook your water you could make a iced teas with the moringa as well so in the marketplace now pretty soon you'll be able to go down to any health food store or any raw food shop online and you'll be able to buy powdered moringa you know in a package much like this and i actually got this at a recent trade show um, for the health food industry and there's a you know this is a new food product that's coming out and soon you'll be able to buy it I, but once again freshest is best is then grow your own if you can get some seeds they start really easy from cuttings actually so uh but freshest is best is so if you do buy the packaged product please be aware that most moringa is probably not raw when you're buying it most moringa has been treated and i've talked to a manufacturer that you know uh processes moringa and how they do it is they harvest the moringa leaves then what they do is they blanch them and because they want to kill the bacteria and the mold and the yeast and everything because if they're not blanched, they may have mold and bacteria, especially when they're doing it in you know, a third world countries where maybe they don't have the best sanitation and, and this and that. So they want to sterilize it, so they do this by blanching for a short period of time, but nonetheless, it is blanching and it gets hotter than what a raw foodist would like. Then the next process is after it's blanched, then it's dried and it's shade dried, so that's definitely good. And in the shade, it's uh, dried. It's better than sun-dried because sun-dried could actually fry things and actually get too hot. So shade-dried is much better. And usually it's dried for maybe uh, two to four days, depending on the climate, the temperature, and, and all that kind of good stuff. And then what they do is then they basically grind it down using machinery or the old-fashioned mortar and pestle away. And then they'll basically bag it up and put it in a bag for you. 
So that's the conventional way. And what I would recommend for people that are processing moringa in a in a big, you know, large industrial volumes, instead of doing the blanching, let's invest in a UV light system where basically the UV light will kill all the pathogens and and bacteria and things like that, but then it won't be adding any heat to the processing. That'd be the excellent and best way, in my opinion, to uh, still meet that requirement of getting rid of all the yeast, bacteria, and fungi and stuff, um, and preserving the product uh, without heating it up. Uh, so the way I'm going to process it, I am uh, took the whole leaves, stripped off uh, the leaves from the branches, and then put them in the dehydrator at low temperature. So uh, let's go ahead and check that out. The leaves are kind of like light. Uh, green I don't generally like to use those maybe they're not so good so I'll come up to these uh, branches up here with the leaves that are much uh, more dark green and uh, let's get down to some of these much dark green and we'll compare that to the uh, the yellow leaves there you can definitely see the difference between the uh, hopefully the yellow leaves here and the dark green leaves there so we'll go ahead and uh, easily snap this off you just pull down and it'll come off and then what we do is we uh, take it over to the processing center over here and what I've been uh, painstakingly doing is uh, stripping off the leaves so to do that let's see if I could do this with uh, two hands I come with one hand and just pull it all the way down it'll basically strip it and I'll just have the leaves and uh, I don't want to try to get a lot of stems uh, when I'm dehydrating because I'm probably just going to turn this into powder. So I don't want any thick stems. And uh, once again, just take this and uh, take all the leaves off. So as you can see, I have all these leaves here. And we're just putting them on a dehydrator sheet. So then we take it over here into the dehydrator. And I already have one, two, three, four, five trays of moringa leaves that I'll be dehydrating at low temperature. So I like this uh, dehydrator here. This is the Excalibur brand dehydrator. And there's a thermostat on here so you could adjust the temperature. So I like to uh, have a temperature at approximately 118 degrees. That way it preserves the vital enzymes and more nutrients in the food. And uh, so that's pretty quiet there. We're gonna let this run overnight. So I left the leaves in the dehydrator for about 24 hours at about 118 degrees. So they're fully dehydrated. And now let's go check the dehydrator and harvest the leaves. The dehydrator has been running approximately 24 hours and that was a sufficient time to dry all the moringa that we put into the dehydrator. The dehydrator has been set for 118 degrees to basically keep the enzymes active. And so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna turn off the dehydrator. Real simple, real easy. We're gonna remove the uh, cover of the dehydrator and you can see all our dried moringa leaves. So let's go ahead and uh, pull out a tray of moringa leaves. And here are the dried moringa leaves. Now note the color on these moringa leaves. They're nice and uh, bright green. Sometimes the moringa patterns you get are a lot darker color, so I kind of wonder you know, how they're processing it to get it to that dark color. When truly raw moringa leaves are nice, uh, you know, vibrant, kind of like light green color. So how to harvest this on this tray, if we start shoving it around, the leaves will flake and uh, break up and will get a, make a mess everywhere. So what I like to do is use a standard uh, paper bag here and we're simply going to take this paper bag and when you put this uh, dehydrator tray diagonally in the paper bag, it pretty much fits all the way in. No problem. Then what you do is you just uh, shake, shake the dehydrator tray. All the leaf material will uh, go into the bag without dropping all over the floor. And there you have all the uh, dried moringa leaves. So I'm going to continue this process and harvest all the moringa leaves out of the dehydrator, then I'm going to have a bag of moringa leaves that I, I will then, uh, very important, to put into an airtight container. So I would prefer mason jars or which are glass and then seal the lid tight and then if you really want to get extreme and preserve it, you could then use a food saver to suck all the air out of that mason jar. Uh, dried moringa will store about one year before it should be used. So I just got finished emptying the dehydrator out and I have a whole bag of moringa leaves, this is several pounds probably and this stuff is really expensive if you were to buy it so I'm glad wow it actually smells really good so um, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take some of the leaves and I'm gonna turn them into a powder and show you guys how to make a powder really easily using the uh, Blendtec HP3A blender so all we're gonna do is we're gonna take our leaves here 
take our carafe. This is very important. Whether you're using a blend tank or a Vitamix, you need to use a high power blender. Most low power blenders actually won't really work that well to make a nice fine powder. The main thing to remember when you're making uh, leaf powders out of anything, um, and I, you could make it out of kale leaves, you just dehydrate kale, put it in here, and it'll make a, a leaf powder. You know, uh, dried wheatgrass will make a wheatgrass powder, real simple. Uh, the main thing is you want to make sure the carafe is completely dry. So if you had your morning smoothie and it's still a little bit wet, you want to take some napkins or a towel and dry it out completely. Very important. Otherwise, the powder will be w the wet and it just is not going to work and your powder might go bad because when there is moisture, that's when things could go bad. So I've uh, made sure this is completely dry. What we're going to do next is simply fill up this carafe with some leaves. We're going to take some leaves there and uh, carefully just put them in to the carafe. Real simple and real easy. And you can kind of help, help it a little bit by uh, squeezing them down, compressing them a little bit. And I mean, this stuff compresses down a lot. There's a lot of extra airspace in these leaves. So once you've got a number of leaves in there, we're just going to basically put the top on. Always make sure the top is uh, sealed really tight. And put it on the blender. blender. Now let's blend. Crank it up to high. All you need is a few seconds on high. And uh, then we're going to oh, whoa, open up the carafe and take a look at that. Instant Moringa leaf powder. And I don't know if you can see that on the video, but that leaf powder is like almost a fluorescent green. Not quite. It's a nice vibrant green color, unlike some of the powders on the market that are a lot darker. So now that I have all these dried Moringa leaves, what am I going to do with them? Or what can you do with them? Well, you know, the easiest thing is to make teas out of it. Either an iced tea, a cold tea, or a warm tea. Uh, you could add it to... Uh, soups and salads, um, add it to smoothies and shakes. You could also add moringa to baked goods or dehydrated goods and uh, you know add it to snacks. So there's many ways you could use moringa and once again I encourage people to use it as a medicinal and not necessarily a food where you eat large quantities but a little bit every other day or every couple days. So I hope you've learned more about moringa today so once again to sum it up moringa that probably will be coming out soon to your local health food store and raw food shop online may have probably been blanched in the processing of the Moringa. Um, you know, unless you're doing it yourself, you never know if anything is raw. So please check my other videos on YouTube to uh, watch the video. Just because it's raw doesn't mean it's healthy. Remember, freshest is bestest. So once again, this is John Kohler with OKRaw.com. And keep eating your fresh fruits and vegetables. They're the best for you.